so yeah, let's start. So computer vision. So the idea that you are gonna basically um, create, uh, talk about computer vision using processing uh, image processing techniques uh, without any machine learning, and then you're gonna talk about computer vision using training uh, deep learning models. So basically, we're gonna leverage for uh, models that uh, we already have available uh, from the community, and then we're gonna build our own model from scratch. And then later, we are gonna create a model uh, using the transfer learning techniques. So basically, leverage from a model that's already trained from the community and adding our uh, need on top of it. So bear with me and let's get into the fascinating world of machine learning and computer vision. So yeah, computer vision. So just a quick one. Um, you can say that computer vision is just the, the way a computer can, uh, can interpret what's in the image and uh, in the videos and talking about uh, developing, developing uh, it's just basically be able to write programs that leverage from image or videos. Right? And uh, so when I'm talking uh, about computer vision, uh, basically I'll be demoing some different projects uh, which I will be dividing by uh, two types. So basically projects that was doing uh, using image processing, basically. So image processing like those that done on the Photoshop, uh, for example. And uh, and also some machine learning uh, projects. So we'll be leveraging from machine learning to uh, power our, make our pro uh, project more smarter, right? And so let's go to the demos, uh, no further talk. So, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I think developed like code. So I'm using to the to actually I'm using uh, Jupyter and notebooks, and it's I'm using the Jupyter notebooks because I from the start I'm, I'm planning to share and I'm, yeah, I'm making it easier for for people to consume. But uh, actually developing on the Jupyter notebooks is not easy. Um, also how you write codes is to make it easier and we don't really divide things much. We don't create much functions or those things. We kind of put everything on the same uh, page because uh, we don't really navigate easily. So don't judge my codes here if you want. Very good. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so that's the first one. It's a very simple one. So that's an uh, example of how we can make simple things like this from very easy, um, like get just the edges of things. And um, it's an example of one thing. And uh, you can see that the, the libraries have a lot. So for doing that thing that is not very uh, it's trivial, but um, it's still it's a pretty an image. And uh, doing some transformation on that image is very easy. Like it's just a, it's so cool. Not many code, not much things. So yeah, that's one. Um, I have a list of the things should follow. So, uh, find the algo the next one. Yeah, do that. So, this one here, what I'm doing is, uh, you guys know that the finding algo um, game. So, basically, we have this picture here, and you need to find where algo is. So, and you apply here uh, image processing to play this game better. So, how we find the algo here on this very messy picture is we get a uh, where Aldo is, so you get an example of image, and we apply to find on this guy here. And uh, after doing that, you know, we can identify the ways that um, template is on a bigger picture, right? So it's a, another simple uh, technique, but that this technique it's used in order like more advanced things, but it's basically a template uh, max. Yeah. Um, let's see the next one. Finding uh, shapes. So very easy, we can identify shapes as well on the image, and we use this technique that is uh, find contour, contours, and this is something that we use all the time for for all this process, uh, image processing thing. And you guys are gonna see um, now a very simple uh, example, but later you're gonna be using this a lot of things. So here we are. Okay, this is fine, but this should tapping so in the wrong tab. I wanted to see like this. So we can see that we identify every shape. Um, through code, right? So basically, have this image there. You are able to read the image in five shapes, and from that, we are we can do a very nice copy job. Um, next one is a card reader. Yeah. So on this one here, uh, we have a card. Here, yeah, based on this card, I'm going to be reading the numbers from this card. So it can very uh, real life scenario. So you can read the card, card. And so basically, how it works. So I have here my my my. Um, thing. So basically, it's what uh, the technique that you do with all the again. And all the process here, I'm showing uh, some steps. So that's, not, that's why I'm using um, different notebooks because I can stand to the steps that's happening easily. So here, we, first thing we do is uh, the, the image. So everything that processing the process, uh, we always apply against a gray image. Not in a very colorful image. Blur. To the smart image. Uh, and we mean by this uh, result here. So we're breaking the, up. Or is it just me? Huh? You're breaking up. Or is it just me? I think it's me. I'm not my. I think it's me. I think it's me. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Anything else? That's good. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm on my own here. So yeah, so here you are reading a card, a card and we extract the numbers, so we identify the numbers based on the image, and we we draw the uh, the on those things, and here we can select the text or extract that. So it's a nice example as well. So the next one is a document and scanner. So basically, based on this um, image here, we are going to apply some image processing to make this uh, look like um, um, it's kind of it's kind of document. So through the 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 process, so the first we and find what is the edges of the, of the paper. We apply this technique to find um, edges. Then, so here you already have the the paper selected. From there, we are able to transform in a way that we see that it's not really uh, correct. It's a bit uh, out of um, alignment, but we were able to make this totally um, like good to see. So this uh, this kind of thing. I even have this app on my my phone. I use uh, for when I need to send documents to somebody. And we can do this online. So don't do it. Um, app for that, so this is an image for for uh, uh, web app to find the processing. Um, so next, uh, so another thing that can help us is uh, you mentioned uh, difference. So basically, uh, based on uh, this image, we want to see what's the difference between these two images. Right? And can you guys spot what's the difference? Right, we're gonna take a bit of time, but I think it's easy to find. But uh, using um, some computer vision, can you? Yeah. It's not Mastercard logo. Yeah, exactly. So now here I already showed you. Yeah. So yeah, we are able to see what's missing in one. So here I can draw where I was supposed to be. Here I can extract what is, what is missing, right? The area. And yeah, so another thing that can be beautiful in our real life American. Um let's go to the next one. Um yeah. So next one that I want to show is this multi test, multi choice um test. So basically based on a image. That it's the the guy. We forgot about it. I don't know how it's in English. But okay, here is the one that you chose, and here you are able to read where it was selected, or where it was selected, and then based on that we can say uh, how many uh, was correct. I mean, uh, so for example, I'm mean, working with this image, and um, here I have selected where is the correct part. Based so on the on the zero one, the position one. Hold on, you guys, see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so based on this image, I'm applying things. So here again, showing that we always transform things to, uh, to black and white, and uh, we identify all those um, options so for each for for each row. So identify there, and then in the end, we are able to just I don't know how to do it. Is that right? I thought, yeah. Yeah, we lost it. Lost it. I, when, I, when I was in college, I, I, I worked. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So I'm going to just move here to the beginning of the dance, but I always stop. But uh, did you get this part here? Just finish this one. Yeah. So, yeah, here I'm able to read the options and perform where I was expect. So for example, taking it here to identify which one was uh, closed. We count how many black pixels we have on there. So if you present just two options, you still find if you scratch more with the one you want, you'll be you can have one uh, more black and um, pixels. Um, I'm gonna move to, to the different one that's better. Yeah. Still in the bar, same bar. Um, so you guys back, are right there? Yes. Okay, so, um, so let me share again. And then, uh, yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, yeah uh, this is a good thing. Okay, so next one. I'm just add the list here to go. And then. So image search then. That's it. So in this one, I'm I'm gonna show how we do a uh, image uh, search um, based on a data, a data set. We can find similar picture to what you have. Um, for example, 
So basically, given this image, I want all image that is similar to this one, right? And here is the result for that. So you can see here that the image come the first, the same one, right? And the ones that is similar to that where we have blue sky and the water in the bottom. Uh, one more boat. So you can see that the image are different. So even though it's a boat, uh, the boat here is a different place. So you have a boat here, and here you have water and a boat, but have like similar. And it's based on the color uh, histogram. So we basically build a histogram uh, uh, color on the things. And uh, another example here, for example, this one, if I search for this one, you want those that similar to this, we got those here. And it's, uh, you can see that the sunset, it's for all the sunsets things to come. And another example here is the, given this one, we get all that is from water. Yeah, from water, 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 water. Yeah. And uh, another example here, this one that's a very blue sky. I think that it's blue, comes to as a result. And the technique that we use, we kind of do this Instagram. But before we divide uh, the image in few parts, because if you read everything the same, uh, we will get only blue things because it's a lot of blue here. But then this will be very little. So we separate it in different parts and we can analyze the image and take in different areas and not uh, overfit one feature or one color. Uh, let's go to the next one because it's lots of things. Um, remove duplicates. That's a very can be very useful. Um, when you you can find images that it's uh, duplicated or it's very similar as well, so it's going to be exactly the same. But if, for example, here, after applying um, the processing, we can see that those images, even though it's different names, so this is not looking at the names, look at the image itself, uh, you can identify those that is the same, and easily you can uh, remove those that is duplicate, for example. It's very important when you're doing the training side of things, when you are gathering, uh, gathering data, uh, sample for, for the training. So if you have uh, the same image a few times, that is screw up the, 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 the model as well, and add bias. bias. So it's important and can be useful on the day today as well. Um, what are things that you can do? Uh, so I'm going to show you something that you usually see on the Photoshop. I don't know if you guys have worked with Photoshop, but we have this watershed algorithm thing, and it is basically um, so it's basically the ability of um, so given this image, I can select areas that will be. Um, it's better just show them. So given this image here, right? Yeah. yeah, so given this one here, let's say I'm gonna select the bridge area. So select then I paint everything with blue because there is no barrier. So that's why I say it's a water shell thing. Because from that pixel things goes until uh, we find a barrier. And in this case I'm gonna add a barrier here on this guy, for example. Um see for example, yeah, so this color that is similar is going to here. And for example, here I can add another uh, area. Uh, so that's why I want to have it in blue around there. Uh, and you see things here. So it can be adding different color and different areas of blue on the, on, <coughs> on the sky. And I don't know, around the different that as well. And add more colors. So yeah, I, I, I'm pressing different numbers to add different colors uh, on, my, uh, on my keyboard. So yeah, basically this one here is I, if you use Photoshop, for example, you use this technique a lot to kind of uh, add contours to things. For example, when you are extracting a person uh, from my image, uh, you would use this technique. So, for example, if I want to extract this whole uh, mountain here, you could just be selecting area of the same color, same color, and extract everything that you select from there. You're going to be seeing this technique in, uh, applied in another exam. Um, so, I think I want, okay, now I'm going to show a bit uh, the processing uh, <coughs> steps for when you are working with uh, image processing, right? So for now, I'm just showing uh, lots of examples, and you can see that how powerful it is. Uh, you can so many things you can do on the day today, and you're gonna see more things later. Uh, but let's see how is to, to work with image. So when I prepare this this example here to us uh, to go through, uh, then you can see. So basically, how is to to extract every image, every coin from this image? Because this image, if you see, they are um, uh, different uh, coins, but they are together. So this makes things uh, a bit uh, harder because. Uh, how the computer see on the first, on an naive way, let's say, it's everything into one image, right? So let's see how is the process to extract uh, every point from this image. So the first thing that we always do, I think I mentioned that we always apply blurs uh, to make the image uh, less noisy, right? So we apply the blur. The next thing that we always do, we try to make the image as 
simpler as possible. And in this case here, the most simple way to do it is do a black and white. So black will be our uh, background and the white will be our prime ground. Right? So that's another thing that we do. And then we, ap we apply contours. And contour is a very nice thing that we use all the time. That uh, is giving us all the contours of different uh, part of the image. On this case here, because we're applying contours to the black and white thing, he got all, uh, all the way contour, the only contour that I have, right? So all this contour here. However, you can see that the uh, see as a single image, right? And uh, it's not true, we want individual things, but because they are linked, you, know, you cannot use the thing. So that's when we have to use this Watershed algorithm um, that I showed on the, other, on the other example. And we are gonna do it through the process again, so we're gonna uh, black and white. And so, but now we are uh, black and white still, just remove some noise that left to this as well, just to remove things. Everything that we did so far was to get to this point in black and white. And then what do we do here? We apply this distra distance transform, which what does it? Uh, fades so on the center it's the whiter part and it starts to be a bit uh, black as goes close to back uh, to the black area so it starts very white and start to be fading uh, towards black uh, when it gets close to, to the back part so here you can see that it starts very white here and it was fading and here in the middle as well where, where it was you cannot really see but where it was white uh, around here is also applied that thing. so now you kind of have a bit of separation and then we apply uh, this uh, threshold thing that we we did before, but now we do based on the max. Uh, okay. Max. I have this, this part is how I, I'm gonna later. I'm gonna talk more about how we deal with image. But image is basically uh, a RGB, a uh, three-dimensional array RGB that will be from zero to to uh, fifty-five. Right. So here I'm just taking seven percent uh, of the color until white. So it's almost white until white. So that's the threshold. Say everything that is from almost white to white, and extract that. So then you got the really uh, white part of what we saw here, right? So this area, more or less, right, seventy percent. And now we got for uh, the separated, but still, it's not taking everything, right? But now at least we can see that there is elements, separated elements. And after that, we put it together. So we just change the color. Now what was uh, what was white, now it's uh, black and this first. And now we kind of have separation here. This we know, but still we have a foreign ground here that is linked, right? And then the next step we have we have this connected component thing that apply different colors to things that was in the middle. So you, you cannot really see here, but it's different colors, right? So now that we have everything separated in different colors, we can apply something else here, but it's just put together. Uh, this, this is basically making sure that there is no black color to one of those box here. And we can skip this. And now we're applying the watershed thing. And basically we take that area that we have that color and check with the, the cone itself. And you see from here, uh, all the way that is the same color, keep the same color, paint on the, uh, with this color here. And all the way from the middle, all the way where it's the same color, identify that area. So basically, if you see the image itself, uh, I think uh, if you see what, how was the coins from here, if you see that each coin has one different color. So when you are here, you can rely that it's everything here is the same color. Uh, and from there, you can apply contours, and now you have uh, each one individual separate. And um, really, pretty interesting. No? So it's, you need to use some imagination and we'll be creative to, to work on those things. Um, so any question uh, or anything? Comments? Comments? No? No, that's actually really nice. Uh, that, that, that whole, you know, step-by-step -step process, it's interesting to see uh, okay. how the processing goes internally. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, we don't need to look at the code because yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, but the, the, the way, the thought, the thought process, yes. uh, I yes. think so, we want to show. Yeah. The algorithm basically that's actually similar. So, yeah, let's go to the next one. So this was to see how I uh, show the, the thought process. Um, now, one example to work with uh, videos, uh, who is on my LinkedIn, probably already saw that one. Um, for this one, um, I don't have to follow the thing. Uh, so those that is real time thing, and some it's very sens sensitive to light. Sometimes, uh, this one here, for example, I'm following based on the, on the color. It is the color, it's a bit, uh, depends where the, so it's better just show the, <coughs> The, the video in part so here yeah, because I set up when I, I, I record this video I really put the color that was on that time so this was supposed to be so I I frame it that I, I will track this color specifically on here so it was specifically because I was in front of the light and other things and I didn't want to get my t-shirt blue as well so if I put a very uh, wide range of blue you'll get my t-shirt but it's exactly close to that one uh, and yeah so it's very so you can see how to do a, a tracking object as well so without um, much uh, much processing and, uh, a bit how was the thing and um, so here I'm describing everything and here I'm even giving some example of different color uh, that you could be, be tracking so it's red and the, and the yellow as well so yeah one more example uh, I think that we can do let's go to, to the next one it is 
Uh, uh, yeah, things will not work very well as well because it's quite expensive things when and to be dropping those. Um, another example that I was on my LinkedIn link probably so as well is the uh, it is the finger counts thing. Uh, this the same will be uh, look at the colors so depending on how you like here and I will see if I can show it now. So here it's good because um, this technique here, for example, can use for monitoring uh, CFTV uh, monitoring thing. Because for example, I got this this background here, and we don't process anything before if it don't change. So I got this background here, I have it here now, and process not happening if I don't change the background or the color that is there. For example, now here, yeah, you can see that is that in my hand. This is stable. I'm not sure the video I did now. When I, I did it especially for that light to work uh, better. And uh, so I can see that I have one finger, two fingers. And yeah, so those things that I'm showing, it's, it's the way that you debug. Uh, so basically, to count, things have to be outside of that circle. That circle. And yeah, so it's a way to debug. And so, so yeah, okay. uh, then my different thing. Okay. Um, yeah. So. I think that's all for the uh, image processing thing. So everything that was done here, that is no machine learning, no deep learning. It's just the pure uh, open CV uh, framework. And uh, basically, a lot of things to do only with those techniques because uh, it's not really easy to train and very specific things and things like that. But um, for example, for those counting counting fingers, it would be easier, would be more stable if you just uh, train uh, a model that would recognize how many how many fingers you have in that. So it would not go to that way if it was to, to build uh, a production uh, uh, finger counts, and I think it's that for. for and yeah, so now we're gonna go to the machine learning things. Then, uh, yeah, and uh, so basically on this part, we are gonna go uh, and use leverage from trained models to to build a smarter uh, software. Right. So here I'm not building. So when you are talking about machine learning, and most of the time you will be able to leverage from. Uh, models that is already available on the community, and you can just uh, leverage on those here. For example, one of the examples I'm going to show here, we are going to use more than one model uh, uh, to in order to build our product. So in the same project, you can use more than one uh, machine learning model. And so let's go to this. So I have a list. Ah, it's important thing to know is when you are talking about uh, when you are uh, we are talking about uh, deep learning deep learning uh, models. Most of the time, you're going to be using or either classification or uh, object detection. So and from there we we build things on top of those, and maybe we could include uh, image segmentation as well. But I think uh, classification and object detection is the main thing that we, we do uh, when I'm talking about uh, computer vision and deep learning. So the first one I'm going to show is going to be image classification. So here we're going to use uh, some models that we have available in Keras. Keras is a framework for build the machine uh, deep learning models, and we have already available for free. Uh, some others, and you can just use those. And we are going to see here how to how to use them first. Run all, and it's very interesting how we uh, we get something very powerful and very simple. So, for example, I'm passing this image, and the model is saying saying me that this is a convert a convertible car with 98% confidence that it's a. Okay. So here it's saying that it's a ball, so 90% that it's a ball. Here, uh, almost 100% that's correct. Um, it's to the couch, so it's a really low percent uh, confidence, but it's actually true. And here for coat, uh, is it a type of gun? Is it? I don't know. It's correct. Um, here it's a bigo. You can identify that it's a it's a bigo with a little, uh, not much um, confidence, but yeah, it's right. Bigo, it's good. Uh, and here we are using one model uh, that's available here. I'm using the uh, VGG16, so it, I passed here. And but uh, you can use VG619, Inception V3. So basically, this is different models that the community have built and diff with different performance. And uh, we're going to see, for example, that the difference between those these two. So now let's use another model that we have available. And I will just download that and make it Yeah, so see, conversable is still, so both are ball, ball still, right still, so a bit less confidence. The other one was almost 99. Uh, this one needs even instead of get the sofa, uh, split the sofa that the other one gave. This one get the the table lamp, uh, even though both were, was trained with the same data set. So, but the one here and 
with that electronic light lamp, and the other one was the studio. So far, and here now it's called as a revolver, revolver, and 85 percent, so way more, uh, more confidence, and gave something that uh, for me makes more sense. And here it's totally confident there is a beagle, and in fact this model is the most recent one. Uh, this is the latest inception, it's the latest one, uh, and usually it's, it's the best to, to use. And um, what we can see the all those uh, different objects. So we have 1,000 to. Uh, to identify, and from this you can definitely build something already. Uh, just leverage from what it's it's available for us. Okay, so as I did here, you could uh, build your classification. Um, so, but classification most of the time is the it's used as an example when it's talking about a uh, deep learning model because it's the most it's the simplest one. And what is really hard to build is um, object detection. And but we also can uh, leverage from the community, and we are gonna see here now object detection using machine learning. So you are using the YOL. It's also the most um, uh, advanced one and here we are gonna use some images to find uh, things uh, and here's the label so we, we don't have 1000 it's a bit less so it's all those things that you can identify so person or uh, buy car motorcycle airplane and heavy later and yeah so i think worth to just show a bit how it works uh, i didn't show the previous one but it's basically same i have here the weights uh, when you train your model we got a model in the end that it's uh, sometimes it's called weights because it's how machine learning learn it's it's, it's with weights uh, it's complex with them that's i'm going to skip that part uh, but here you have weights. In this case here, it's 200 megabytes. These weights, it's quite heavy, quite heavy one. And here, just the configuration. So you got those two. This is just the path. Then on your uh, computer vision thing, you just say read uh, your model from yeah, the one I'm passing here. And from there, you are already able to perform things. Just that. Um, and uh, here we send the image to the. Um, okay. We call that to the to the neural network, not to the model, let's say. Uh, and yeah, we perform something here. That's the point that we're trying to see. Oh, get me the result of what you found on the image. Just get you pass the image, get what you found. Here I'm just adding something to see how long it's taking to to process thing. And here is just to to draw it. So what was found already. Here I'm checking that I just want things that it's over the threshold that I added. Uh, because um, model always going to return something, but it's going to be with low confidence. When it's low confidence, most of the time it's, it's wrong um, prediction. So we just ignore those. And for those that's bigger than the, the confidence threshold that you have, you just uh, draw the things. So in this case here, I'm giving this image, and I'm able to find out the person that is there. So I didn't find this one back here, but it's covered, so it's a uh, bit harder, life harder. So you will see the switch case as well. And in this case here, we are able to find the bottle of wine, we are able to find the wine glass, the vase, the dinner table. Um, yeah, so we could find almost everything, just the plate over the other one there. Um, yeah, so it gives us, I, think, I don't think we have uh, plates on the, on the option, so probably that's why I didn't came. And here we've got person, we've got TV monitor, we've got a chair, we've got a remote control, and we have a dog as well. And here you have person uh, and ball. And, and yeah, so if you want to build anything that uh, needs object detection, you can just level from this and say that your application is, uh, is uh, baked using machine learning. Um, and uh, yeah, that's one more example of object detection. And let's now go to uh, what I want to talk about, segmentation. So this can be interesting as well. Uh, yeah. So basically, we identify. Um, so I showed the segmentation following the colors, but now it's more advanced. Now we add in segmentation based on the object. So we can find object and color that thing um, following the. So here, uh, here I'm just giving the uh, the label, the legend for what is each color. And down here we start to show. So this one here it is um, asphalt. Here it's, it's sidewalk path, person, bike, uh, traffic lights. Uh, natural, so natural, natural, and cars. So we are able to now to treat things separate, and that is how the drive car would, would be seen. And here on the second, on this one, we got the asphalt and a car as well, and vegetation, and sidewalk. Even could see sidewalk here, it's very small, and buildings as well have a space, so everything's built, buildings here. And for this one, this one is an example of uh, how much can be, can be dangerous because here, this uh, a pink one, it's a sidewalk. Uh, a walk thing, like sidewalk. So it's saying that the asphalt hits the sidewalk. So yeah, it's not really correct. So this is asphalt. Uh, and here, another example here is doing correct. So people, uh, sidewalk, and asphalt, the buildings. And it's yeah, doing very correct. So it's funny to have this option here to see that. So because good, seeing people walking on, on this, on the asphalt, so good, thought that would be uh, sidewalk thing. How is that? They record it? Yeah, sidewalk. So, yeah. And yeah, you guys still there? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. Yes. Everything is. Yeah. And I'm too fast. Um. I'm going a bit fast no, because a lot of things. Sure. Oh, no, no, so yeah, I'll keep going. Uh. 
So segmentation, what's a good length after, and people yeah. counting. Let's see. And uh, also based what I did, I showed techniques that is find is find objects and do classification. Now I'm gonna apply on more examples. We all that can be useful for our day and maybe we can build a company as well. And this one here is to count people. So now that we can identify people, let's why not uh, see if they are crossing a certain area. And in this case here we are uh, counting everyone that passed over the line. And let's run this. See how it goes. Um, so here it's based on a video. So we identify the person. The person passed. And down was one. And let's see if comes another one. So the machine learning, what's using machine learning to identify the object? Then find, count it, and count. So it's counting wrong here. Nobody's passing up. You got the one. Uh, not prediction right here. Uh, but yeah, so based on that, so you uh, you use machine learning to identify a person and try start to do the technique that I showed in the beginning for image processing to track that object on your uh, video. On this case, it's, it's a frame, so it's still an image. And you apply everything that we talked about. And so let's uh, go to the next one. Let's put it on. Uh, we'll, this is what next one is. We're counting car speed. So again, so again, we can we are able we have machine learning uh, model to identify car. So once you know where the car is, you can see how long it takes to, to go to to the point A to the point D, and you can calculate the average between points and get the speed for that for that car, right? And you can use a um, Raspberry Pi with a camera and perform okay. and uh, the processing on the Raspberry, and you can just have a radar ready. Uh, so let's see how we do that in action. There's a video again. So there you go, the car pass, we identify the car. The car comes, so we got it there from point B to point B. We see here that over there, the speed uh, he is fine because it's 25, but you will have 30. Right, uh, idea. So, um, yeah, so how you leverage from machine learning is like that. You use the part that you need and do the rest of the process using the base techniques. And car speed, the next one would be uh, face detection. So this does that I'm sharing, I think it's uh, face detection. And let's go and just run that. So there, there I am on the thing. So it's very, so machine learning is fucking crazy and good. So side to side, I put on here, here, here. Still know there's a fucking face. The confidence drops a bit, but still there. No, if I go up here like this, it's, um, Dropping. I can close my eyes like here, then the content drop, but it's not looking only one on a feature, it's looking the whole thing. And it's fucking uh, precise, which is very impressive mm -hmm. uh, how this one uh, works very good. And so, and Thank you. yeah, and I'm using the image here to show as a uh, sorry, no, no, I think we can next one. Yeah, so you can see that identify this, this, um, uh, this face here, even on the dark, like partially co uh, covered and with 99% confidence. It's, Damn awesome, really. Um, yeah, so we can definitely use that thing. Uh, let's see now I'm at part of the face. Let me just close the thing because all this is good. And image. And finds part detection. So that was another one that I shared in the LinkedIn. And is basically not only identifying the face. So we are looking at the face, but we are able also to see part of the face. So we can identify the eyes. My nose is here as well. It's the nose. And here the eyebrows area, or even cover, you just kind of see a bit that's in that area, like eyes and this area here, the jaw thing. Okay? And yeah, I kind of trying to do things if I close the eyes, it's, uh, I try to do this mining, but it's not really working well. Yeah, sometimes it works, but yeah, that is, it's very hard to read the image. Um, yeah, again, from that, another thing that you see on the uh, Instagram that's very cool, it's actually it's easy to do, you know, build things. Yeah. But once you have the face, you add everyone. Um, yeah, let's go to the next. So, a bit of what uh, zoom does, right? So the zoom get the whole body here. You could create a zoom, it's not, it's not magic. Um, yeah, it's possible. Um, well, so yeah, uh, let's go this one, let's go to the next one. What else? I think we want to have the face detection, face detection. And yeah, to, to finish and um, to so uh, later, this one here we're gonna just run, but this is a, a model that I built. So for following tutorial, so everything here, is, I'm following uh, the internet, and not building anything out of this from scratch. As I said, it's one more, I think. Right? Um, and this one here, I need something. I'm sorry. So to 
wrap wrap things up. Um, where is it? I guess I stopped it. Yeah. So again, it was in here in face, right? Identify errors. So now we can build when mask check. So basically, see here if I was a mask, green, not. Can go a bit further, green, let's see how mask works. Yeah. Can monitor. And you can see that it's not simple check if there are things on and off, but it's smarter than that, right? And it's really, it's a machine that I'm building based on example with mask. Even though the data set that was used, not real mask, the real people with mask was basically people and added mask on, on, on top. Still that smart, that's really what's uh, And yeah, and this one here, we're gonna go a bit um, deeper on this example because this one here, um, we have, we are using a uh, model to identify our face and uh, the areas of our face, the one, the previous one that I showed. And uh, we build a, uh, another model to check about the, the the mask on the area. So basically, we get this area and send to, to the model to identify it have a mask on. Um, yeah, so let's go quick on those things. Um, close here. So you guys want to go on the deep learning side of things? Uh, how are you out of time? Are you there? Yes. Yeah, we could uh, well, uh, yeah, time, uh, yeah, yeah, so far we are using thing, uh, models that from the community and, and uh, uh, was planning to show how to build a model, a very simple one, and uh, how to I leverage from existing model to add to add the mask capability capability on top of that. So it'd be a transparent learning thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually very interesting, uh, Alex. Uh, this is uh, amazing technology that we've been playing with and showing up here. Uh, would you? Would you mind continuing next week? Is there enough content for next session? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, we sure. But yeah. How, how do I just say that? You can go deeper. You know, much deeper. You can even you can code if you have. Uh, if you have the time and the inclination for, for next session. Probably we'll have anything planned for next week. So this could be learning. Okay. Yeah. Let's leave for the next then. Uh, next week. Uh, next. No next week. Anytime. Uh, so we can do next Friday. There's nothing planned for next Friday. So I don't know. But if people want to continue now, I'm okay with that. Uh, let uh, let everybody else in the call speak. Okay. Yeah, yeah, depends. Like, uh, so we don't like, so we don't need to rush, Alex. If you, if you think that you you have like more material to be talking for another half an hour at least, I think we maybe. So I, I don't mind to stay, but uh, if we have a lot of things and you're gonna be rushing through all that, it's better to have more time next week. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah let's leave. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna show now. Let's go show now. I'm gonna be okay. Busy. Okay, yeah. and it's also you know your holiday, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm having fun on holiday. You, know? you can imagine, Just playing with those things is amazing. Uh, yeah, so let's continue. If anybody if it's time, you can drop and uh, yeah, because then I obviously can uh, continue exploring that. I, I want so everything is gonna be on, on open source thing. Uh, doing my GitHub. Uh, I need to see the strategy because those models very heavy, so I cannot really put on the on the GitHub. So they only won't accept more than one hundred megabytes. Some is twenty hundred, and I need to think about that a bit. Wanna go quick? So the next thing that I will show is um, models. So very quick one. So I have this. Then I run this connected. So there is Google has some very good tutorials and about uh, yeah, the yeah deploying and these things. And this is a notebook uh, that they have, and also actually they have a data for free to use a GPU. Really. So um, for example, on my driver, I have so I have this new collab thing here that shows all my notebooks, and I can just click and open straight on the collab. So basically, a cloud environment. And I have the option to run GPUs. And so, for example, here I can choose which kind of one time uh, GPU, GPUs, and more. So, GPUs, I can choose them. And uh, so, what is this about? So, this is a, a Hello World computer vision thing that's like I, I cloned for Google. And this example here basically have this data set of images, uh, clothes, based clothes. And the data set is very nice, let's say, very not realistic because everything is very much. And the same position and uh, the same size. And okay, we got that for clean cares. We got to import this like uh, like this. And then we got the data. So basically, we got the image. Uh, yeah. And everything that when you're talking about the learning, you have to separate in between training uh, data set and testing data set. Right? Always like that. And we also separate between the image and the labels. So the name of the image is that. And we use training to train the model and use tests to test if the model that you build it is performing good. Uh, so I'm not be running here to be quicker. So here, example, uh, the image. So uh, I think I'm okay. Uh, I think more interesting than that, we should look at how is image uh, manipulated. Um, then I think it makes sense. So, so how is image and how we perform all these things? Image is basically arrays, three-dimensional arrays, 
So when you read an image with a, a OpenCV, it's an array with three dimensions that you can see here, for example, it's a dimension that is color. Uh, um, so it's like that. So it's, it's column and row, and there is three other uh, layers that it's every color, so RGB. So it's one array for uh, green, one array for red, and an array for uh, or and blue. <laughs> so it's like that, and that's what we see here. Right, so every it's three. So it's a line here for green and for red everything. So that's how manipulate everything. And here one example. So for example, from the array, I can do the image in the array. And here an example how we are dealing with every layer, every color separately. So for example, here I put zero to the position one, which is green, so R G B, right? Uh, and zero also to the blue. So I'm just using the red peak, right? And then you see already the red uh, channel of the image. The same if you change for only leave the green, so we just use green, and uh, let's say if we leave two, which color would be, like, uh, would be only uh, GB, and GB will be kind of, that's the mix of those two. So here's just to show that everything is array, and it's from zero to 255, uh, and from there we start to, to apply things. And knowing that, we can go back to the this guy now. So that's what we're saying here, that's an image, and you're seeing all those um, uh, RGB values. On this side here, we are using only gray, so that means it doesn't need to be three dimensional array, it's just uh, two. It's only you know a column and rows, so that makes things way easier. And that's with this, so it's green, so then you just see um, column and row. And here's the example looking. Uh, here we're not seeing gray because it's uh, it's kind of like, it's different. I don't know exactly how it's going. Another thing that we have to do that in uh, machine learning, everything in deep learning, everything is from zero to one. So we don't want to use uh, integers, it's all always float. Uh, make things easier, don't know how, but make things easier. And here it's exactly when you are building a model. This is a building model, this is what it's need to build model. And in this case, you are just flattening things, everything flattening. So you have two dimensional array, and sometimes three. We are putting everything on a single array with everything there. And then we add two neurons, connecting neurons. This one here is going to have one, 128 neurons, and you're going to use this activate, activate function. And it's, I'm not going to explain that it's each one. Uh, it doesn't work. So it's, I, want, what I want to stress this, that's it to build um, a model. But obviously, there's a lot of things that you need to know what to choose um, the parameters. And this is a very simple one. That's not even convolutional. Uh, um, model, this is a simple model that is based very nice, very nice. And here we build the, the model, so this is the, the, the training time. So building is just put everything together and you can use the summary to see who, how the model is. And here's the the, 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 the training, this is the, that's what means the training model. And this is the process that's training, here's very fast. And here you are evaluating how good is your um, how good is your model. So you now, uh, we train it against the training image, and uh, you guys remember that I said that you always have to have a chunk of training image to see if you if your train uh, uh, was correct and the parameter that you used was good, and now you train, and in the end, it will give you the accur accuracy for the train. So, this was 86% eight, eight, accurate. Uh, that one on the deep learning uh, world says it's very good. It's six, point from eight to step seven, it's very good. Um, and here is how you pass and use it, predict, pass and predict. And that's it, That's but it's a very simple one, and uh, it's not even using convolutional. Uh, right? right, and that's the next thing that I'd like to speak is convolution. What is about when we say that for use work with images, use CNN convolutional network, and network. Uh, what that means, and uh, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is very good example. What um, so when you want uh, process an image, we change, we apply some filters to the image as part of the, the process, right? So for example, I showed you guys that in some parts I use blur, sometimes I use um, uh, edge detection, and and how those things is done is very curious because, uh, for example, it's ju we just wow. change the value of the image. So, how do, for example, if you want to uh, add, make the vertical lines stronger, what we do, you just apply some filters that is basically, um, I this part. so ba basically, we change the, the values that it's on, on the image. So, for example, here, yeah, that's about it down here. So, for example, so, so for example, that's the real. That's the image, let's say, right? So we have those pixels, those pixels, and this pixel is zero uh, RGB. That means that zero is black. This one is 64, so it's a bit more uh, white, and so on, right? So then we apply that filter, changing the values of the pictures, right? And in this case, we just do this formula of multiplication thing. I think it's going to be down here. Uh, anyway, we just multiply every uh, pixel by this channel that you kind of chose already. A kernel, this is called kernel. So you chose these values here, you multiply every pixel, and automatically you get these things. And the result of this multiplication is it's 
uh, highlighting the vertical lines. And if you just change the values of the kernel, now for example here, it was zero, now it's minus two, you are highlighting the horizontal lines of the picture. And if you change uh, the values again here for something else, you can apply blur, different level of blur. And, and this is what is convolution, when you are talking about convolution neural network. And it's the, the, the action of being applied loads of features like that, and which will help the, uh, the, mo the model to identify uh, features from the image. Very interesting, huh? Um, and there is loads, so during the process, there's loads. Here I'm just showing how to highlight the horizontal and, and vertical lines, but there's loads that is applied. And that's it from this side. Let's move to the next thing. Um, very interesting. Okay. So here, now we started to talk about convolutional uh, network. So now we see that we have this conv in the beginning here, when in the previous one we didn't have. So it's uh, applying different things that's more related to image. The previous one that I, I showed would, would be applied to anything, any, uh, any uh, model that you're trying to do, could be uh, conversation, uh, speech, those things. Um, and yeah, so now it's uh, so not going to go to the same, but each thing that here you were applying something, the same idea, it's convolutional things, and uh, in the end we are flat anyway and passing those uh, neurons. Um, yeah, but this is too much details. And what I would like to show here is, uh, actually is that, all that. So now it's just a difference between what's a normal uh, model and what is convolutional and what is convol convolution. To the, why it's called convolution, that's convolution. Uh, now, so the next thing I would say, let's go to what okay. was uh, needed to uh, to build the mask and combination thing. So it is basically, okay. Um, we have the images. We, we prepare some things. What, what I want to show is the model itself. Uh, yeah, this I'm using a model that is in Keras as well. That it comes from yeah, that's go. called a mobile net v2. And I'm this is used to find some some stuff. Uh, uh, and we leverage from that model, and we say here that we don't want the top. So the la the last. Uh, that's what it is this guy um, um, yeah so basically you have all those level here layers we call layers and we don't want the, the latest skill we are gonna just leverage what is already training up to this point right and the later the, the end we want to use our own trained model so let's keep going through the thing. So basically, one at the top here, I'm saying that what's going to be inserted. So it's my just the, the shape of the images. Uh, here I'm passing uh, multi-dimensional, so it's not great. No. And here you get the output no, from the base model from here. And what we are doing? So then we are adding everything. We are we want to add. A, this is our layer. Now it's not our layer. When this average pulling and uh, 2D, I could explain that. Ah, uh, see, uh, see. And here, I, what I'm saying is my final model will be based on the base model. That is the one we saw that is to come from the internet. And we use our head model that's going to be on top of what is there. And then we say that we don't want to train what came from the base model from the internet. So don't want to train again. Just use the weights that we already have. And we add some uh, some activation function thing as part of our model. Design. And here we have our summary of the model. And it's good to see the summary. Uh, so then here we start the training. Um, I think so. And here I'm going to predict some things to, to evaluate how good was the the, the model. And uh, in the end, I'm going to save. That's the save the model. And with this model, I can give to you, and you can use on your project to uh, use my model that I trained. Uh, and you can maybe change a little bit on mine uh, and add your head uh, layers as well. So when you go here and you try to run, so the images. So again, uh, we are we are getting the images from here. So we have this data set. We have to follow this pattern of two. This is two classes, classes with mask and without mask. And inside we have all masks, all people with masks. You see this mask is fake, just put people and added a mask on, on the face. And we're going to use the real one. And the other one is only people without mask. And the thing is, it's a, this is, remember when I said uh, that we have object detection for classification? So this classification, it is classifying if the image has mask or not. And the same way we say the image is a, a, a revolver or it's a lamp, we have to have different classes here. And so look at the, our model that I just created. We la look how many things we have yeah, on this model. Yeah. How many layers? This is called layers. Oh, this is so yeah. This all layers that we got from because from the original guy. And here on the really bottom, bottom, we have our stuff. Our average pulling to flatten and then in the end you drop off. 
And here we say that we have two million parameters, but trainable is only 600, uh, 164,000. Uh, and not trainable is all those things here. So we are leveraging from those things that is already trained and adding our stuff on top of the thing. And um, yeah, so based, we are building a more powerful uh, model because we leverage from some future uh, that was already trained. And uh, yeah, yeah, now I'm over there. I want to someone here. Now I'm okay. Here, here I'm printing, going back to, uh, to how it's, uh, how you debug model things. So here, different layers, it's identifying different uh, features from the image. Because on this image, I see a person here. It's, you can see that this layer is doing all this, have all this thing. On the layer down here, is it's smaller, but it's a bit different. And going smaller and smaller and smaller. And what does it think to be smaller is this uh, pooling technique. That, um, it's basically making the image smaller without breaking, uh, losing uh, important features. And with that said, and what happened, uh, my model is training here. It's taking some time. And the model usually takes a lot of time. And in normal CPUs, it's sometimes months, but this one here is not really, don't take long, uh, very long. And yeah, so basically we're gonna be saving this and the final uh, model is gonna be this one. And we are using on the mask feed. We are loading here for them. We are loading the model here and keep going. And yeah, and that's it what it is to build machine learning projects, basically. So a lot of things will be on top of that, it will be more we uh, tweaking parameters, adding different uh, layers with different techniques. And the main part of what it is building machine learning thing, it is deep learning, right? It is related to the data. More data you have, more accurate will be your, your models and so on. And I would say that's all for my side. Wait. Wait. I really like this idea. Hmm? I really like this idea. So I really like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is really interesting. Yeah.